Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 71. Yesterday, I ran across a radio that I bought about 15 years ago and got busy at work and didn't get to use it for what I had originally planned to use it for, which was satellite work, being able to use satellites to communicate with other people, talk to the astronauts, stuff like that, which requires either two radios or a dual band radio. And I um, bought this radio used and for that very purpose. And I, I really like this radio. And now that I'm retired, I hope to get back into satellite work because it does take some work to, to get uh, any satisfaction out of it. So anyway, this is my Yezu FT-470 right here. Dual band HT. It came out in about 1989. Um, and at the time, it was kind of the cream of the crop for a radio that had these functions. And I'll kind of, ex I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. It, um, it's fairly compact. This is uh, just one of the battery options. Actually, it's one of the smaller battery options. And um, it came with a, a dual band antenna, which this is not the dual band antenna it came with. This is a two meter um, antenna, which I just found laying around because I can't figure out where I put my dual band. And so it came with a dual band radio. And the, um, the really, 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 really nice feature is that it has two receivers, a VHF and a UHF receiver so that you can receive both bands simultaneously and actually hear both bands simultaneously. It, um, it didn't have a lot of memories but it had m more than you normally need. It had I think it was 20 memories per channel or per band and, uh, and then in, within those bands it had three special channels that you could program. So it had actually 46 channels, which more is more than enough. Um, well, only time you'd need more than that if you were using a scan. It, um, it had um, CTSS, C CCTS and paging capabilities, which I've never used, so I don't even know how to use it. And um, it had, of course, uh, repeater capability, so you could have an offset to use a repeater. And it had, has tone built in, so you can program a tone if you're trying to get into a repeater that requires a tone. That's built in, not an option. And um, construction-wise, it was very well built. Uh, for instance, the back of this, part that gets all of hits, is die cast. It's not plastic. The, the clip is a metal clip, not a plastic clip. The uh, controls have a rubber, a rubber, a rubber cask in around them to prevent moisture from getting in. Same thing with the keypad. They're protected from uh, getting moisture in them. Um, uh, and like I say, pretty rugged built radio. It, uh, I'll show you the, uh, the dual band receiver here. Let me turn it on. I don't know if I can pick this up from my camera or not, but it actually has two displays other frequencies for each band. And since it has a dual receiver, you are receiving on both bands at the same, same time, simultaneously. Simultaneously, because it has two receivers. And the way you control what you hear 
is on the top here there is a balance control knob so that you can increase the amount of signal audio signal going to the speaker on each of the bands so you can turn one down one up one medium so you can, it's just like in the old car radios where you had a, a balance control for your speakers or your stereo and uh, so that that was a really nice feature that you could see both bands hear both bands and um, unlike a lot of the uh, uh, dual band HTs where you had to switch between the two to see the display and to hear this one got both simultaneously that's what we really caught my eye it has um, a lot of uh, of course it has a squelch control and the balance and the volume is up here and then this is a tuning knob so that you can actually instead of using a keyboard you can actually fine tune the frequency using this knob up here um, what else? I said repeaters okay okay and the um, oh the other feature it had that I liked is it had a, of course a little hanger for it is um, that it had power saving features now the one I use I like to have in my radios is one that you can put in a time say 30 minutes and then the radio after that time the radio will shut itself off so that you can put this on your nightstand listening to it fall asleep and then the radio won't stay on all night long I like that feature in the radio this had it also had a at that time proprietary feature which it would interrupt the receiver for a sh very very short period of time of which you could control and theoretically that by turning the receiver off um, it would save power the disadvantage is if you're listening to a conversation you're going to get breaks in the conversation so I never use that feature it is, it's like okay I'll use up the power I don't want to I don't want to use it. Um, of course, it had scan capability. You could put in two frequencies, and it would scan between the frequencies. It would scan all the memories you had programmed in here. Had that capability. It um, had a really. Had, it has a really nice. And I don't think the camera will pick this up. A really nice backlight. Because I can turn it back on. Um, See there? The keys are backlit, and you can't see this, but the display is very well backlit. That was nice, especially if you were trying to work satellites outside at night. That really came in handy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember if there was any way to lock that on. I don't remember. I think there was an option that you could have the backlight come on when you press the keys. And uh, so there's there's probably a key, and it would stay on for a certain period of time, I think. So there's probably a key that you could push that wouldn't change any functions on the radio that would turn on the backlight if you're outside. But like I say, there might be. Uh, an option where you could have the backlight stay on. Of course, having that on continuously is going to drain the battery. But if you were outside, and as I recall, a few times I did use it, I did recall that you could program it to turn the backlight on continuously while you were trying to work a satellite, then turn it back off. So, like I say, the display capability and the, uh, the backlighting was really good. It. Uh, it had a lot of battery pack options. If I could take this off, just this just slides off. So you have connectors on the bottom of the radio, and you have connectors on the top of your battery pack. 
this was pretty universal and so there was a lot of battery pack options <coughs> this particular option which I like you know, the one that's functional anymore for the ones I had actually comes apart and you could put in six double A either NICADs or rechargeables. <clears throat> I like that option. I hate these radios that the battery pack is sealed. It's uh, very unique to that radio. So you have to buy a new battery pack or go to like Batteries Plus and they'll rebuild it for you maybe. But this this particular radio had this had this battery pack. It's a FPA-17 that you could put in your batteries when they went dead. Um, this one I think provided about two watts of output power. It's nine volt battery pack, of course, because it's got six triple A's, double A's. And there was a bigger one, much about twice the size of this one, which provided 12 volts. And you could get up to five watts out of the radio. And then there were other ones that had uh, AC plug-ins. Uh, I mean, AC-DC adapter plug-ins. Some of them had connectors on the bottom, so you could drop this into a, a uh, drop-in charger. Um, I had a couple of those, and of course, they were permanent sealed. Though when they died, I just threw them away and went to this type. You can still get accessories for this radio. Matter of fact, I just checked on eBay before I started this, uh, this uh, show. Um, and there were a number of dealers on eBay that would sell different battery packs, drop in chargers, um, and, uh, uh, speaker microphones that you could plug in the top. And so they're still available. So it's a very viable radio still, even today. So anyway, so that's kind of the radio. Um, like I say, I really like this radio. It's it's very easy to program. That's the one thing I like about it. Very easy to program in the frequencies and the repeater offsets and the tones. Very easy to do. Um, unlike some of the newer radios today, which I've seen some reviews, and that was one of the complaints, is it's almost impossible to program manually you need to get the cable you need to get the software and do it on your computer because doing it manually with the keyboard is almost impossible this guy it was not that difficult um, it, um, it has a very nice keyboard and even as old as this radio is everything is still there there's nothing worn off None of the labels or anything were worn off. And like I said, I bought this used for about $150. It was probably maybe seven or eight years old when I bought it. So the guy that had it originally took good care of it. And of course I have. Well, I haven't used it much. So anyway, um, some things that, uh, that weren't good about it is the original. Thank you. The original units that came out had an intermod problem, which uh, Yezu fessed up to. And for no charge, if you sent your radio back to them, they would fix it, send it back to you. And then, of course, they fixed that in the later production units of the radio. So that was fixed. Um, with the 12 volt battery pack, which is like I say, double the size of this thing, it's uh, kind of heavy, kind of heavy, now, especially with this die cast metal back. So it gets a little heavy. With this one, which is the 9 volt battery pack, it's just right. It's not too heavy. Um, what else? I mentioned the fact that it, um, the switch here, for the backlight was only is only momentary. As you hold the switch down, it's on, and when you let go, but it goes off. So it, you're not there's no toggle so that you can 
turn it on, leave it on, and then hit it again and turn it off. That's kind of a set. The, the volume on this little speaker was not that great. Uh, if you were in a somewhat noisy environment, you had problems. But you could get a speaker mic plugged in here, and you could have the speaker mic you know, on your collar or something like that, or earphones. Uh, and that would solve that problem. So that's one uh, drawback is the internal speaker uh, is kind of mediocre. The uh, the S meter, which I doubt if you could see it, I'm sure you can't, but it's down on the bottom. It's a bar graph on the bottom. It's <laughs> it's showing the S units. Of both receivers at the same time. So you get one bar for both receivers. So you don't know which one, unless you say, oh, okay, that's a guy talking on two meters. That's the S meters indication for him. Um, you don't know which one, which pan it is. And of course, when you transmit, it uses that and shows you your power out. So that's pretty obvious. Because you only can transmit on the band, which is the main band. You got a main band and a alternate band, they call it, and the main band is what you're going to transmit on. So you can hit a button here and it'll switch it to. So that's that's the difference there. Um, that's that's about it. Um, good radio, still works great. So that's the show for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you do, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Gives me some indication if I'm providing the right information uh, that you're interested in. And bye bye.